Welcome to Primal Vinyasa's Sensory Processing. So in this category, we want to work with our senses that oftentimes are forgotten. So not just our five senses, but the senses of proprioception, interoception, and vestibular. So you'll need an apex, a donda, and two blocks. You can use a weighted ball or something that you craft at home if you don't have one of these. So just begin by moving your arms around, holding on to the weight, and just create some swinging movements. We'll start with proprioception. So this is our body's ability to map where we are in uh, space, basically. Our body's understanding of earth and sky and how we are on the planet. Begin to just move, taking some different lunge positions, swing your body from left and right. It's also your body's ability to understand the muscular actions. So we can map where we are in space. So if I had my arm out here with no weight and I was to close my eyes, it's a little bit harder for my brain to map my arm. But as soon as I add weight and I close my eyes, I have more of an assuredness of where I am in space. So that's what proprioception teaches us is that we can actually learn to be more spatially aware. So that's what we're doing here is just becoming more spatially aware of our limbs. Begin to swing. When we add load, which is weight, this is four pounds, we start to build more healthy neural networks and pathways of understanding where we are. So especially with our shoulders, take your apex down. Oftentimes we think with our shoulders they just need to stretch, right, in one range. But we want to actually have healthy loads on our joints and from that load healthy range. So pick your apex back up, put it in your right hand, bend your elbow, and start to create internal rotation and external rotation. You can move your body, squat down, take it overhead, and as you do this, internally rotate, externally rotate, take your arm, again, overhead, out in space, behind you, stay low, keep your neck neutral, if this is too much load for you, four pounds, you can always use a block. And now close your eyes, we call this sensory deprivation. So we deprive one sense, which is our sight, to enhance the other sense. Because our eyes tend to take over and then we lose our ability to awaken the other senses. So proprioception gets deadened because we rely so much on just our sight, especially now using so many phones and computers and technological devices. So close your eyes and build your proprioception pathway a little bit more. Switch sides. Start with your eyes open. Again, external rotation, internal rotation. Try not to tighten up through your neck or your shoulders. Go overhead, behind your back, low. Let the other part of your body be free. Just explore your movement, and then close your eyes again. Find those different pathways, and of course when you have load, when you bring it from your core, way away from your body, that becomes more challenging. So you can stay close to your body for a regression, or the more that you progress, you take the load away from your center. Go low and high, behind, and rotate. And then you can start to actually pass the apex under your legs with your eyes open or closed. Pass it behind your back, overhead. Finding just exploration that's not taking yourself too seriously. Come down into a lunge position and then into a half primal squat. Just take it overhead. And again, when we take it from our core all the way up, this overhead squat position can be challenging if you don't practice it very much. But in my therapeutic practice, the overhead squat assessment is a pretty important one because it's going to show what are called compensatory patterns. So if when you take your arm over your head, you have to back bend to do that it's not a true shoulder range. So you want to maintain 
your body's position as you move through your arm. Take it behind your back. And again, overhead, out to the side, overhead, out to the side. Switch legs. Without compensating, take your arm overhead, out to the side, overhead, out to the side. Same thing, other arm, natural breathing. So that should get you a nice dynamic warm up. Place your apex down, come to kneeling, rest your hands in your lap on your thighs. Allow your mind to drop down, your heart to soften. And feel yourself here from the sky above the earth below, your body here in present time. And just invite your breath to come in in its most natural way, wide and full, up and down. Our ability to move inward and sense our inner body is interoception. It's that sense of which, you know, when we were in utero and we were first forming from our embryology, from a cellular being into an aqueous being and into one that dwells the planet, that beginning stage, that first sense of development is our, our sense inside, the internal body, even before the I or the me or the name. So draw your attention inward Breathe in a way that you can actually feel and sense or visualize that you have an inner body, inner pathways, blood, lymph, bones, tissue, fascia, a matrix of beingness, spirit beyond the bones. Drop your attention inward. And may this practice inform not just the outer body, but the inner body as well. practice just as much this internal work as the external work. Take a nice deep full breath in and a long breath out. Go ahead and open your eyes and grab your Donda. So we're going to work with the stibular, which is our body's sense of our inner ear and where our head is, particularly our head in relationship to the earth and sky. And so dropping our head out of neutral, spinning, anything we can do to awaken that sense of vestibular helps to orient us back to our center. But oftentimes we get really dizzy as we age because we're not using this sense. So we'll start with the apex and you'll place it in the middle and you'll just basically walk around your ganda, which seems quite silly at first, but not very often do we actually just walk in a circle. Right, so you just start to awaken that sense. Look up and look down, and then go the other way. And notice for yourself if just that is challenging. How often do you spin? How often do you walk in circles? Sometimes it feels like we're just walking in circles in our life, but this is an intentional walking in circles. Come back to neutral. When you get dizzy, if that um, bothers your senses at all, place your apex on your head and re-weight your body so that you have a, a core center line where you feel integrated to the midline. So that already makes me feel a little less dizzy. And then do it again. Start with the middle, walk around. You know, think of some of the things that would really awaken our inter interoception, proprioception, vestibular, which would be jumping on a trampoline, adding a flip, and maybe a cartwheel. Right? As adults, we, we do that and we're like, ooh, or we go on a merry-go-round or a roller coaster and we feel really sick. That's because those senses aren't being utilized. They're not being used. They're being used when we're children, but we forget to use them as adults. So you want to take your time coming into this. You don't want to immediately go into spinning. Place your apex down on the ground. And then the next thing that I'm going to have you do, take your props off to the side. And start to, just from the ground, crawl around in a circle. So when you're lower to the ground, this won't be quite as dizzy. Come back to center and 
rest. Go the other way. Come back to center. Watching children on a merry-go-round playing, it's just like they can go for so long if they do it, but oftentimes when even children aren't using that sense, they lose their balance or we think they're uncoordinated, but they're not actually challenging those senses. Come back to neutral and rest. Okay, now we're gonna try it a step higher. So now, basically, you're just kind of using one leg to kick around, going in a circle. Of course, if you're on your sticky mat, this won't work very well. So kick around in a circle. You can be on a slidey surface. Kick around in a circle using your leg strength. Practice looking up or looking down. And come back down to neutral. Okay, close your eyes, place the apex on your head if you need it. Weight your energy, bring your presence back to center. Bring your awareness back to center and breathe. So you don't wanna overdo the vestibular practice if it's not something that you do so that you get really dizzy and you stay dizzy for a while. So once you feel that the room is centered, everything is back in neutral, grab your Donda and come back up to standing. So now we'll work back with proprioception, which a lot of it has to do with the arc push and pull. So when children are developing their proprioception, you'll watch them and they'll just for no reason pull things across the lawn, push boats, um, lift buckets of sand across the beach, pull blankets. There's just this natural push and pull action that starts to happen and it's developing our senses. So take a warrior one, left leg forward, right leg back. And start with your pushing. Pull with your hands and push. As you push, dive around your spine. Rise back up, pull the donda towards your chest and apart and look up. Dive down, breathe full, breathe wide. Pull the Donda apart and rise back up. You feel the push and pull action from your diving and your rising. And at the same time here, you're working your vestibular because you have to take your head out of neutral. One of the tendencies I see here is as people go down, they still keep their head up. Or they go to the side and they still keep their head up. But dropping your head out of neutral is so essential for your vestibular. Finding the engagement of your muscles and their strength range is very important for your proprioception. Come back up to neutral, now go overhead like you're doing pull-ups. Reach and pull. Reach and pull. Keep your legs strong, your breath full, reach and pull, come to neutral, step forward, and switch sides. So primal vinyasa is more of a drill-based practice. Work your uh, push and pull with your dive and rise, rather than just a vinyasa practice teaching one breath per movement. So that's why sometimes it can feel a little bit different, but as you start to get familiar with some of these drills, you can string them together into more of a flow. Dive and rise. But the drill based practices come from a long practice for me therapeutically, working with clients therapeutically and spending a little bit longer in one drill with repeated actions. But again, it's not linear or repetitive movement. We just want to stay in one drill long enough that our brain can start to know it. Oh, okay, that's pull, that's push. That's head up, that's head down. That's what spinning feels like. Pull, pull, push, pull. One more time. Step forward, pause. Now we'll add a little bit more vestibular here. So as you go, you could take, and make sure I don't hit anything, you could take your Donda out to the side, or you could take it overhead, this one I like to call helicopter, and spin around and bring it back down. And you'll feel already that that is a little bit more for your senses than having a 
closed object on the ground. Spin and spin and come down. Twice more. You can do it arms up or arms by your sides. I'm going to go by my side. Spin and spin. So when I first practiced this, I could do maybe two or three and the whole room would stay spinning for a while. So do as many as you can there without staying dizzy for too long. Place your donda to the side and grab your two blocks. Grab your blocks, place them down on the ground, grip them so we build the grip strength. Use your hands equally and evenly and step back to plank. A few foundational drills here. Press back into squat dog. Breathe full, breathe wide. Pull yourself forward, plank. Push yourself back, squat dog. Nice full breath in. Let your head drop. Pull yourself forward. Let your neck be free. Push yourself back. So again, there's the proprioceptive push and pull, the strength action of your muscles. And add your lunge now. Right leg comes forward, round your spine. Step, lunge, pause. Grab your block now like you did with your apex and move it through your shoulder ranges. You can bring your back knee down, take your block overhead, reach back, and move through space. Take your block underneath you, overhead. Now close your eyes. So again, we weaken the sight sense to strengthen the inner sense. You can also do this with your back leg up. Big, full ranges, finding diverse pathways. Come back to neutral, place your block, step back, squat dog. Pull and push, find your own pace. Full breathing. And step your left leg forward nice and slow. Toe heel, bring your back knee down, grab your block, and same work. Try and keep your block facing upward as much as you can, as if you had a glass of water on top and you wouldn't spill it, which is very different than just turning it, which when you keep it open in this position, you can actually move through all of your joint ranges, go under, out, above, behind, and plus you won't drop the block. Again, you can do this with your knee on the, off the ground. Come back to neutral, place your block, step back now, downward facing dog, let your head be free, drop your head, relax and breathe. So a lot of this work we're doing with the blocks actually helps us in those weight-bearing shapes. 
but we'll continue with that. With the proprioception stability, oftentimes we just don't have the brain maps all the way out to our hands, so when we're doing some of the work on our hands, it's just like it feels so far away from our brain. So the more you work with these blocks, the more your brain actually maps, oh, my hands, I know how to use them, which is a huge part of our survival, our sense of heart health, because if our hands don't work, we probably wouldn't feel very safe. So grip your blocks. And from your blocks, gripping position again, just start here standing and then take them forward and notice the difference from your core out into this distal point, back to your core. Now from here, squat. Take your blocks forward, round your spine. Stand up and let them swing. Click them together, squat. Push them forward, round your spine, belly to your thighs. Stand up and let them swing. Okay, and now squat. This is where the overhead squat comes into play a little bit. And you can widen your blocks now. Grip them. And as you squat, take your arms over your head and stand back up. This is where your compensation patterns will show up a little bit. So if when you squat, taking your arms over your head or anywhere near over your head is too much, you just stay forward. Another progression or regression, depending on how you look at it, regression because of weight, progression now you're pulling, you can take your uh, arms overhead using your Donda now, so it's less weight, but with the blocks you're pushing, and with the Donda, you're pulling. So try a few of those. Come back to your blocks and try just the difference between both. Keep your neck neutral. Try the different ranges. Stand up, place it down, shake it out. <laughs> A lot of squats. Move your blocks to the side. Come to neutral, stand up. And retest your walking, your spinning. You can go a little bit quicker. You could also run. Go the other way. I promise you, once you try it, You'll want to do it more often because it gets easier with time. This is where you need to have a really good song to whistle as you walk around your Donda. Come back to neutral. Place your apex on your head if you need it. Close your eyes and breathe. Orient yourself back to center, back to your midline. Remember what you move for, what you practice for. Grab onto your uh, Donda, come down to the earth, place it on your calves, and go ahead and sit back. So this is a whole nother proprioceptive experience. If you don't practice moving the fibers of your tissues across their length, this might feel a little bit more intense. Come up, so just take your time and breathe. Roll and scroll. So what we're working for in this short sequence is having an understanding that we have an inner body, we have an interoception, that we have a proprioceptive awareness. This sense is so essential. But oftentimes we're running on our sight or our smell or our hearing and not the sense of, of engagement, of strength, of power, of connection, of where our body is uh, in space, where we are on the planet. We lose that sense. So for a lot of us, when the proprioception isn't being enhanced or engaged, we can feel quite disassociated or really bogged down. That sense is such an important one for survival and not even just old fashioned survival, but current survival, how we engage ourselves on the planet. And then this vestibular sense, this ability to not feel so disoriented. We wanna be able to be shifted off kilter, to be shifted off of our center, to be turned around upside down to see different vantage points and still remain in our center. Good for our brain, our body, our heart, our spirit. After you've taken a few of those 
rolls and scrolls all the way down your leg. And just sit back on your heels, hands to your lap or your thighs, close your eyes. If you'd like to lay on your back, you can lay on your back. Otherwise, just resting here, again, to feel your inner self, your inner body. Allow your heartbeat to soften, your breath to slow. And then place your hand somewhere on your body or somewhere on the earth where you'd like to connect, to remember what it is that you move for. For me, movement isn't just a practice of aesthetics, of shapes, of getting things right. Movement is really about my ability to live in this world, to be able to help, to be able to help myself, to be able to lift things, to be able to move around and be part of my daily life. Movement, strength, resiliency, presence. Without our ability to move, we would feel so helpless. So may we be grateful for this, for this practice of moving our mind, moving our tissues, moving our breath, and invoking our spirit. So may, may we awaken more of our senses, more of ourself each day.